you had a front row seat to the Pelosi era. And I wonder from someone high up in leadership, what did it look like from the front row? What was it like to be a Democratic caucus member under the leadership of Nancy Pelosi? I think all of us working with her, working around her, uh, had the sense uh, that we are working with the greatest speaker the country's probably ever had. Uh, someone of immense talent, some of someone of historic proportion. Uh, what she was able to do with the slimmest of margins was only possible because she she combines so many different skills. She knows the members supremely well. She knows what they want. Conversely, she knows what they actually need. She knows their districts. Uh, she understands the legislative issues. She's a brilliant tactician. She knows how to work the members uh, on both sides of the Capitol. Uh, she knows how to leverage, uh, even being in the minority. Uh, and she got so much when we were in the minority, uh, often to the uh, the anxiety of the Republican majority that they were outplayed by Speaker Pelosi. Now, you might find somebody who has some of those skills. You, you rarely find in a generation anyone who has all of them. And you have never found, I think, in history, someone who had them in such great abundance. So... All of us around her recognize that we were in the presence of greatness. You know, I will say, as someone who's had the privilege of interviewing her before, you always knew that you had limited time because she had an extraordinary calendar. And it wasn't just, you know, legislative meetings. These were constituent funerals or baby showers. I mean, this is someone who really understood the poly part of politics, the humanity. She was there at critical moments in her constituents' lives. And I think that that's part of the speakership that, go, that it hasn't been reported on as much, the degree to which she was really on the road doing the damn thing all the time. But she also had the ability to be firm, right? I mean, I think that's the other part. She was unstinting when she didn't like something that one of her own caucus members had presented. This was one, a, a, a mom who was unafraid to, um, I won't say spare, she didn't spare the raw. I don't want to bring corporal punishment, but you know, she was tough, right? Did you, did you ever, were you ever a victim of that toughness? Oh, I saw her toughness all the time. Um, and I remember, I have to tell you a funny story. When my daughter was, I think, only about three or four years old, uh, I took her to the Capitol. And at that time, Nancy Pelosi was our whip. And I introduced her to Nancy Pelosi. And I said to my daughter, Alexa, this is Nancy Pelosi. She's our whip. If you don't do what she wants, she has a whip. And, and Nancy got down on her knees uh, at the level of my daughter and said, don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. And she took my daughter's hands and said, it's a candy whip. It's a candy whip. <laughs> and, I, I thought, and I thought to myself, it is not a candy whip. <laughs> um, no, she, she could be really tough, as Donald Trump found out, as anyone who's ever tried to cross her found out. Uh, and, and most importantly, she is and, and has been utterly tenacious. Uh, in defending our democracy at its most vulnerable hour and, and tenacious in defending her constituents in California, people all around the country, and particularly children who are her real love and passion. Congressman, you know, as, as Nancy Pelosi exits the, the, her leadership role, she's staying in Congress, but as Kevin McCarthy appears poised to take up the gavel and Republicans are going to be in control of Congress and they've outlined their priorities, and I would put that in quotes, their priorities is largely, um, you know, the fabrication of conspiracy theories. What do you, how are you thinking about the next two years ahead? What can Democrats do? How should House Democrats be thinking of their power in this moment? Well, you know, one of the reasons I was really hoping, one of the many reasons I was hoping that uh, Speaker Pelosi would stay on as our leader is it would have been the greatest mismatch in talent and intellect in history, uh, Nancy Pelosi versus Kevin McCarthy. Um, look, you know, it's important for the country that the work, the business of the country get done in the next two years. Uh, President Biden, I think, made a very gracious statement uh, to Kevin McCarthy, urging that we work productively. They don't seem interested in that. Now, as you said, you know, Kevin McCarthy has promised the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world that, no, he's going to pursue these QAnon crazy conspiracy theories, investigate Nancy Pelosi for what? Uh, for having a, a, an insurrectionist crowd hunted to, to try to kill her. But, uh, you know, sadly, it will be, uh, for Kevin McCarthy, uh, the lowest common denominator of their caucus. He is a 
very weak leader in, in every sense of that term, meaning he doesn't have a stronghold in his caucus. He doesn't have a, a really he doesn't have an ideology except his own advancement. And that's not much of, of a, a kind of cohesion to hold together his caucus. So, um, you know, sadly, I think it's going to be chaos on their side of the aisle. And it's a, a tragedy for the country because, you know, we need to deal with inflation. We need to deal with, with changing climate. We need to deal with health care and so many other issues. Uh, and we need a functional government.